members of the kindergarten mothers' clubs work in relays, sorting and grading half a million flowers. These are to be woven into a huge floral carpet, and the design, 200 square feet of it, is marked on the floor. The patterns woven from flowers of various colours, many being flown from Hastings and Christchurch. To preserve the delicate tonings, each bloom is chosen and arranged with care. Working till one in the morning, weavers put the finishing touches to the intricate border design. Exhibition of the finished carpet of the Rose Show raises money for the Wellington Free Kindergarten. At Christchurch is New Zealand's only starch factory. Starch ingredients are flour and water. Starch liquor is pumped into the centrifuge, which, rotating at high speed, isolates the solids. The solid starch is now cut out in blocks ready for crushing. To complete processing, the starch is spread in trays and placed in the kiln to dry after which it's screened and fed into the packing bin. The finished article, ready for industrial and household use. At Wellington, the Arari is completing loading. Along with the frozen mutton for London are going live sheep for South America. This is a consignment of 196 sheep for buyers in the Argentine, Uruguay and Chile. South America has plenty of sheep, but their breeds don't remain true to type so fresh blood has to be imported from time to time. The consignment is of Romneys, Corridales and Lincolns, and during the voyage they'll be housed in pens on deck. Two attendants are going along to look after them. This shipment is overseas recognition that when it comes to sheep, New Zealand breeders have few equals. Double-headed goods and the northbound New Plymouth Express are two of the last trains to run over the old road between Turakina and Okoya on the Wellington-Wanganui line. The construction of a deviation via Wangahoo, Fordell and the Matarawa Valley, undertaken more than ten years ago, is almost completed. Modern equipment enables construction gangs to make short work of cutting the main line and linking up the ends of the deviation. Telegraph wires have to be diverted too. The last section is laid and secured in place. Ballasting the track is the last job. With its three tunnels, the deviation cuts out the two steep grades on the old road. This will reduce running time, enable heavier loads to be hauled, while eliminating extra engines and saving valuable fuel. In late spring, the white baits start to run in the West Coast rivers. Then the coasters get the white bait fever, and armed with their nets, take up all strategic positions. People appear in the most unexpected places. And they sit for hours waiting for the tide to turn. To catch your fish, you mustn't mind getting wet. set nets as well. Known as trenches, these groins are the hokotika way of catching them.
On the west coast, white baiting is a sideline to dairying, and you bring in the cows and white bait at the same time. It's in the far south that the big hauls are made. In the bush streams far beyond the end of the road, the fish are netted in large quantities. To keep them alive, they're put into holding tanks, sunk in slow flowing water. Here they can be kept up to 36 hours. The fish are canned and packed in boxes. These are carried back to the main roads by pack horse trains through narrow winding trails. his catch to town, an outback farmer is sending it in with the timber lorry. From remote parts of the west coast, every form of transport heading towards civilization carries its share of the perishable freight to speed the delicacy to ready markets.